Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the fifth episode of solving problem statements using Java. So in this video, we are going to solve this problem statement. So let's try to understand this problem statement. Basically, we are going to write a sorting algorithm where we are going to sort more than 5000 elements in which we will be using quicksort technique. So as we know, quicksort is a divide and conquer algorithm where we divide main problem into subparts and solve for subparts first and ultimately get solution for main part. Before we jump into understanding the source code and output, I just want to remind you guys that I have put the source code in my GitHub repository and the link is in the description below. Go and check it out. So with that said, <clears throat> let's jump back to the source code and do all those creative things, you know, super excited. And let's not waste time and get serious. Change please. Boom! Here we are in front of my iMac. Mm -mm. I'm in front of my iMac, but you guys are in front of right in front of the source code. So <clears throat> let's try to understand. First, I have imported two statements. So that's quite simple. First, the random class to generate random integers. Second, that is scanner to scan inputs from the user. So we have imported two packages, Java built-in packages, and after that, I have written two classes. First class that is source and if you open up the source I have I have developed the I have written the main function and inside the main function I have written the core functionality like invoking the algorithm calculating the time taken to sort elements and scanning input from the users you know uh, stuff and after that I have written the main algorithm that is merge sort and not quick sort so quick sort is the fourth problem statement. If you guys observed, I have made a tiny mistake in the intro. So apologies, I'll make sure that doesn't repeat. So if you open up the merge sort class, I have written the two functions that is merge and sort. And in that merge function is private. So it cannot be accessed. It, can, it cannot be accessed outside the merge class. So we don't need to access it actually. And after this, I have written the sort function, which acts as a wrapper function to call the both of the halves of the array. So my recommendation for you guys, before understanding this problem statement, let first try to understand what is divide and conquer technique, so you get better idea of how this particular algorithm is being implemented. And after this, let's try to let's start with the first function that is sort function. Sort we have three parameters of all three integer types, and first one is array. So that's quite simple. I have even named it as array. And after that, we have two another parameters, naming low and high. So it doesn't return anything. So it's a void, and its access modifier is public. So let's try to open up the function boom okay and inside this I have written the base function so basically the base function is required to stop the recursive function at particular point you know so what this particular function does is it divides the array into first half and second half and try to call the algorithm for that particular half and try to sort it and rearrange the elements if they are in unsorted manner. So first, if low is less than high, basically low is nothing but the first index of the array and high is nothing but the highest index of the array like number of elements in the array, you can say n minus one. And basically when this function is being called, we calculate if low is less than high, we calculate the mid and we call the sort function again for the first half so it's a recursive function you guys need more imagination kind of stuff here so that you guys get better understanding so this is basically a bit difficult compared to the for loops understanding for loops and other kinds of loops and after calling for the first half we are calling it for the second half by pa passing the mid plus one now, if you guys wonder why we are not in mid, we are why we are not passing mid and we are passing mid plus one, that is because we are already passing mid here. So if we pass just mid, we are going to even pass the mid index. So we don't want that. So for example, if mid is three, we don't, we have already sent three index 
at line 121. We don't want to send that again. So mid plus one, that is four. And we are going to send that. With that said, so after calling this, the recursively it will call and come back to this particular statement even. And this will call the Moix function. So now that's quite hectic, you know. So it really took me a lot of time to understand this and implement this. So let's see how I will be able to convey it. Woo! Oh my God, lot of excitement, lot of nervousness. Why am I even nervous? Hmm. Anyways, merge function <clears throat> doesn't return anything. So it's a void. The name is merge. Anyways, quite simple. So as I said before, its access modifier is private. So we don't, we cannot access this particular function outside the class. So I thought it's not necessary, you know, and completely use the features of Java. So we can make it more efficient. The programmers dream to be more efficient like nobody else. You know? After this, as we have seen for the sort function, we have three parameters, but for the merge function, we have four parameters. One, all our, all four parameters are of integer. First one is of array and even its name is array and we are passing another three integers that is low, mid, high. Low consists of, you can say it as the smallest index. You cannot even say it as smaller smallest index because it will be called recursively. So basically merge, what merge function does is when we, the array is being passed, it compares the elements and try to sort them. So at the max, the <clears throat> parameter passed here will be dynamically, it will call only two elements. What I mean by is in this particular array, whenever you pass, you are just calling, you are just passing uh, array with two elements, not more than that. Even if you pass, it will handle it out. But let's see. After this, we have three parameters. With that said, I have declared four different variables again with of integer type and one is an array to this particular array i have called it result array because it's a temporary array which can hold maximum elements of 10,000 elements so that's cool you know after that int i equal to low so basically this particular int integer i holds the lowest index j variable holds the middle plus one index that is the second half index of the first elements of second half so that's quite simple you may not get it in the first parameter but try to understand it it's quite easy after this now <clears throat> this is where most of guys get confused because so let's try to make it as simple as possible first what i have done is I have declared an integer. So to manage its pointer, I have declared this k variable. So that's quite simple. I have I have kept it low. So, so that is the lowest index of the past array. Now you might you might uh, guys ask that then if this particular variable is to handle the index of the result array, then why don't we just keep it to zero? So I will keep it a surprise, try it with the zero and try it with different elements. I will bet you, you won't get the output. So I have even tried it. So as we call it recursively, so there will be some glitches and you will not get the output <clears throat> in an appropriate fashion, you know, the way it's, need to, it's needed to be shown. After this, I have written one gigantic loop. Then basically, before we dive inside the loop, what's happening? Let me tell you what actually this loop is for in a quick shot, you know. Basically here we are comparing the elements and we are putting it in the result array in an ascending fashion. So if you see I consists the low and mid. So basically this particular statement, what it does, it takes one clock cycle and from zero to n, uh, n by two. So this particular statement says that from zero to first half and from mid plus one to the second half to the end of the array you can say so until i is less than equal to mid and j is less than equal to high 
we are going to compare the current index values that is array of i less than array of j so basically i can even take values and try to tell you guys but as we are going to call it n number of times for the single array so it's it gets quite complex and you just uh, that that particular explanation doesn't suit for this algorithm <clears throat> so i would recommend you guys to take particular values and try to trace it out using manual manually pen and paper you know you can even take pencil and paper mm. Mm -hmm. so after that if array of i less than of array of j we are going to pass the current index to the result k so as i said we are using k variable to handle the index pointer for the result array and we are going to increment i and we are going to increment j if array of i is not less than array of j we are going to come back and we are going to pass the jth index whatever element is there at array of the jth index we are going to put it at the result array of the kth index now that's quite you know it's like uh, I don't know, I forgot the word. So after that, we are going to increment the J and we are going to increment K. After coming this, we are going to, if after coming, even still there are elements left up in the array, we are going to just pass it out to the result array by incrementing the K variable. Basically, most of the times we are going to pass only two, two variables, but for the emergency case to handle unknown cases, we have done it. And even for the second half, we have done if any animals left up we are going to pass it out after this what we are basically doing the array which we have which we had declared where for temporary basis we are going to shift all those elements into the main array that is the reference array so this basically completes our merge function basically and let's just summarize because it's a one huge function to understand it as a single shot basically it is it is being called recursively that is more number of times and it sorts the elements and copies down into a temporary array and puts back into the reference array so that's what it does i hope you guys got it after this let's come back to the source class so as i said before source class consists of only one function that is main function let's open it out and it goes like boom so even this is one hell of a function, but it's quite simple. At first I have declared four variables, one of integers that is, if you guys look at the problem statement, it says n value should be greater than 5000. So rather than keeping it static, what I thought of is we'll scan the n value from the user, you know, and to store that n value, I have declared this variable that is number of elements. So that's quite as easy as one to three. Yep. After this, I have declared an integer to store the random integers that we are going to generate. And these particular variables, that is start time and long time, I'm going to use it for calculating the total time taken for algorithm to sort n elements. So where n can be 100, 200, 300, 500 or 5000. Anyway, it's user choice. After this, we have declared three objects. One is scanner to scan inputs from the user. That is in this case, number of elements and random class, random class object to generate random integers and store it inside the array. And our main boy, the merge sort object in which we are going to call the merge sort algorithms, the sort function. So we'll come back to it in a minute. After this, we are going to scan the n value from the user that will be scanned out in next int because it's an integer and if you look at this for loop we are going uh, we are particularly uh, generating the random integer with the range of 0 to 9876 so the reason i have written this 9876 because it generates different types of elements so you can even you can type 10000 it will work fine or you can say just 5000 it will work fine so this is not the total number of elements let me remind you guys this is just the range between in which it will generate the numbers 
and as soon as we generate a particular integer we are going to display it to the user as well so instead of writing two loops we are going to write it in a single loop boom so efficient Woo -hoo -hoo. after this we are going to first capture the time in milliseconds so if you have looked uh, in my previous problem statement in the quick sort one in the fourth pro fourth episode i have used the nano time function to calculate it in nanoseconds so this time i thought of like doing it a little bit different you know dif doing different things i love it ooh, ooh. <clears throat> so i thought of using current time function which is in the inside the system class and as soon as we call it it uh, captures the current time in milliseconds and we are going to call the merge sort sort function to sort the elements so we are going to pass the array which holds the random integers so for the low parameter we have passed zero zero so do not pass there minus one okay you will get an error and after this we are going to pass the high parameter that is n minus one so in this case number of elements minus one now you guys might be knowing why it's minus one because the array index starts from zero and not one after this after this particular function executes completely we are going to capture the time again and so that we can calculate the total time taken after this we are going to just display the array that is the sorted one and as it's a reference array that we are passing in java so it automatically the values gets updated and we are going to display it and after that we are going to show in user how many milliseconds did it take to sort the algorithm so basically it's just the stop time minus start time so that's it um <clears throat> now that's it for the main function now let's jump back to the output so currently i have not opened up my terminal let me give me a second okay okay so let's go back to the particular directory where I have stored this doc. So this is particular um, fifth problem statement. Yep. So we are inside the fold. So let's try to compile it. Java dot source dot Java. Boom. Okay. This executes perfect and fine. Let me try to explain which particular line is executing right now. So if you look at the line 30 and 31, which I have highlighted, it's asking the value of n. So let's just start with small values, you know, like 50. So if you look at it, this is all the random numbers which have been generated. So first element is 1966. So these are 15 random numbers and we have an sorted array. So woo, that's cool. And after that, we are being shown it took zero milliseconds to sort an array. So now that's quite fast. After this, let's try to do it for the bigger values, you know, like let's try with 4,500. So, Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, okay. We have the title here, the sorted array. So after this, we have all the elements sorted. So as it's a not a cryptographically and safe function to generate uh, random numbers. So it, as you can see, it has generated the same numbers again and again. So, you know, that's not quite right and if we scroll a little bit up okay so we have written the enter value of n 4500 and we have been generated 4500 random integers that's cool and we have this sorted array that is being displayed and after this like always it is showing us 54 milliseconds to sort array now that's quite fast let's try it one more time with real big values you know let's try with uh, 9000 boom 
So it took 94 milliseconds to sort array. Ooh. You see, uh, do you guys find any pattern when I scroll this like this? Because I find patterns in this. Ooh, that's quite a pattern. Okay, uh, this is the start of the start sorting array, sorted array. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, yep. Enter value of n random numbers generating nine thousand random numbers, boys. That's cool. And after this, you can see, yep. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys liked it. If you guys liked it. Hit that like button, smash it and share it with your friends and let me know how was your experience with this particular problem statement. What guys find, what difficulty did you guys find? Sorry, I was just trying to speak anything and drink water at the same time. So <clears throat> let me know your experience in the comment section below, what errors you got and if there are any particular bugs that I have written in this particular uh, problem statement, source code. Let me know in the GitHub repository. I will sure uh, try to work on that issue. So I will see you in the next video. Until then, have a great one.